and the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! And you know what that means? It's time for all the toy news, action figure news of the week that interests me, that hopefully interests you. And what a week it has been. A whirlwind week. I'm still a little tired. My voice is still a little bit shot, but we power through with a lot of content this week here on the channel. And of course, last week was San Diego Comic-Con. I hope you guys enjoyed all the coverage from live in person, boots on the ground, San Diego Comic-Con, my first ever San Diego Comic-Con. I will talk a little bit more about that, some thank yous, all kinds of stuff in the weekly purchases video on Sunday. So stay tuned to that in the weekly purchases video on Sunday, possibly an all timer. I've got about 12 stacks of action figures from the last week, just from pre-orders, what I found in stores, San Diego Comic-Con, you name it. A very busy week on so many fronts. Uh, just a wild, wild time at San Diego Comic-Con. A wild uh, life week, I guess what we'll call it, with all the travel and then back to work, trying to get caught up from being gone. Just a very, very busy time. But a lot of cool stuff this week, a lot of cool stuff on the channel. Check out all the San Diego Comic-Con reveals video. I've been kind of going video by video. Just a ton of content, as always, on the channel. And I got to say, uh, this leads me into, of course, housekeeping. Patreon, don't forget about Patreon, of course. You got last day, if you're watching this on Saturday, Today is the last day to sign up for the month of July. Of course, this is the giveaway for July. Check out the Patreon for all the details right there. Seth Rollins, which then leads us into August, which is right around the corner, believe it or not. Uh, we got Adam Cole, baby. Uh, Target exclusive. This will be the giveaway for August on the Patreon channels. Check out the Patreon. and appreciate all the support over there. And if you're thinking about getting to Patreon, August might be the time to do it because all this San Diego Comic-Con stuff, all this stuff that will be in the weekly purchases tomorrow... It'll all be up early on, of course, Patreon. I have 100, 100 plus videos. I think it might even be 200 videos with all the pizza reviews, everything else over on the Patreon channel. There's a ton of bonus extra content over there. And with all the new stuff I've got, you can only put out so many videos a day. There's going to be a ton of early access to videos over there on Patreon. So check that one out, support the channel, all that kind of fun stuff. But San Diego Comic-Con, a very busy week. And it looks like we uh, I next... PowerCon. I've been on the fence back and forth about going to PowerCon. Looks like I may be there. It looks like I may be signing up. I may be headed out to PowerCon. So more on that. If you're going to PowerCon, look me up, say hello. We'll be out there, but it looks like PowerCon here in about two weeks. So ooh, no rest for the wicked like a young Ozzy Osbourne. But let's dive into it. Let's dive into all the toy news of the week. And like I said, a ton of toy news videos all week. So if you love toy news, uh, every single day there's been multiple videos on this very channel. Deep dive in G.I. Joe, wrestling, miscellaneous wrestling, AEW, Super 7, uh, you name it, it's all over there. But there is a few uh, follow-ups in this video and a few new things that we'll talk about as well. So let's let's get after it. Let's get down to business. Let's start with our friends over there at Super 7. Uh, Super 7, one of the show stealers, if not the show stealer of San Diego Comic-Con for me. I love a lot of stuff out there, but man, that cat slayer, just absolutely awe-inspiring in person. I was just totally blown away by this thing. I just can't believe this is a real thing. Well, it's real as far as prototypes go. Will it be real as far as retail goes? That's where we all come in. Of course, backing today is, uh, or I guess 31st is the last day to back. If you want to be an early access backer, you will get a uh, gold key. Now, to me, that gold key doesn't move the needle a whole lot. It doesn't have anything to do with the action figure. It doesn't have anything. It's just kind of a memento type thing. Not really for me. I don't really need that. Obviously, I've pre-ordered, so I'm good. I'll get it if it does get backed. But looking at the math right now, as Jerry Reed would say, We've got a long and a short and as usual, Jerry Reed is always right. As we're at 1,318 backers as I'm filming this right now, we need 3,000 by the end of the day tomorrow for people to get that key. I don't think that's very likely, but we need 3,000 backers here by the end of August or so, or I guess it's maybe even early September, like September 7th or something. What is time, as we do say? But we got a long ways to go. I want to believe my gut tells me we might get a little bit of a bump of Friday payday. A lot of people wait for paydays to, to pay. Of course, you got a long window. There's going to be 
people wait until the very last minute. Like we see with the Dragonfly and a lot of these other things, a lot of people do back on the very last day. You do see a pretty big rise. I get that. I understand that. I hope there's just enough of a rise at the very end to get people over because we've talked about in a lot of these has labs, uh, funding of the arenas, things like that. There's so many people that lay in the weeds. Well, it's only at 1,000. I'll back it if it gets to 2,900 or something like that. Well, if a ton of people do that, then it doesn't get back. That's what happens. So if you're going to actually back it, I'd say jump in, get after it. But I understand the waiting to the last minute as well. I, I totally understand that thought process. But, man, it's difficult. But I really do go back to looking at this thing. And I, I said it in the other videos. I went back about five or six times to check out the cat slayer. I'm like, this could be the last time I ever see this. And I just can't believe what I was seeing. I need to look at it once more. I need to look at it again. And I kept going back because it was just so amazing. It was so much more than I thought it would be. I love a big play set going back to when I was a kid with the flag and Boulder Hill and things like that. So it's right up my alley. And it just is a showstopper thing in your collection. I mean, if you're not a Thundercats person, I don't know if you'd really want to buy this, but if you're into Thundercats, remotely into Thundercats, or planning to get into Thundercats, this is something you got to have in your collection. It's just one of those things that's going to be a beacon to a room, and maybe that's a bad thing, maybe it's a good thing, because I do understand space for people, too. You live in a one-bedroom studio apartment, well, you probably don't have space for something like this, but... Man, oh man, is it cool? Does it look awesome? And it keeps going back. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. In my collector's lifetime and probably lifetimes beyond that, I don't think we'll ever have a chance for a Cat Slayer ever again. Truly a once in a lifetime. No other property, uh, if anybody else gets to make Thundercats figures, they're not going to build something like this. They might build one this big, but they're not going to build one this big. It's just not going to happen. So this is our opportunity. This is our chance. Uh, I guess you just got to do the math, look yourself in the mirror, uh, contemplate it over, and uh, see where you want to go from there. But man, it is very cool. It is very awe-inspiring. I'm definitely picking one up. Uh, hopefully other people do. Hopefully at least 3,000 people do. Now, I would love to get the other uh, bonus accessory tiers and the Lino figure. Not sure if that Lino figure is even possible, but I would love to get it. For sure I would, but I'll be happy if this hits 3,000. I think it's going to come down to the wire. I don't know. We'll see what happens with people out there, but very, very cool. And I got to think at PowerCon, they're going to show this a little bit more. And normally I do talk, we put our business hat on. I truly feel San Diego Comic-Con timeframe is the absolute worst time to do a Kickstarter back the project thing, unless you're into Star Wars and the vintage collection, because there is so many fans of that brand. It doesn't matter what time of the year you do that. And there's a lot of people that's all they collect. That is it. And you can say that about a lot of lines, but it really does seem the vintage collection fans they are there. They're ready to support. They got the money, especially uh, a lot of older fan base as well that have money. So that's a no brainer. But everything else, really wrestling, I don't care what we're talking about. It is a tough time of the year to promote these things. Now, why is that? And I've said it before a year ago, talking about the Nitro stage or no, it was the new gen arena. And that was a different push at the very end. Um, but what we see is, of course, July heavy vacation season. A lot of people on vacation, kids are out of school, things like that. So there's vacations going on. Then after vacation, guess what? You got back to school. We need new clothes. We need backpacks. We need lunches. We need shoes. We need all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of funds tied up in that. Obviously, San Diego Comic-Con, a big time with so many different exclusives, so many releases going on. Targets, Walmarts doing their summer resets, tons of new figures going on. So if you're a hardcore figure collector, there's a lot of things that are taking money out of your wallet. Do you have enough money for $750 shipping included in that for a Thundercat Slayer? That is tough. However, Super 7, they aren't Mattel, they aren't Hasbro, they aren't a massive, huge worldwide company like uh, some of those other ones. So I can see them launching the Cat Slayer because guess what? San Diego Comic Con's there. There's a ton of free publicity, free publicity with San Diego Comic Con. Power Con right around the corner free publicity there's you know tv people out there there's magazine writers youtube people i'm talking about it right now it is free publicity for them talking about it so uh that gets their word out a little bit more because they aren't mattel they aren't uh you know uh, hasbro with millions and millions of followers things like that so it's a difficult time financial wise but they're making up some of that financial wise stuff with uh, free publicity for things and Hasbro Mattel they get the same publicity as well but Super 7 needs it more than Hasbro or Mattel would I would say I think that's a fair assessment so gonna be interested to see how this nets out we're gonna follow it each week on uh, Toy News of the Week and we'll just keep our fingers crossed for those that do want this one so there you go now we're gonna turn our attention to wrestling figures 
did all kinds of wrestling videos this week. So just a few different follow-ups. I cannot believe I forgot to talk about the brand new Basics Ultimate Warrior. We get two Basic Ultimate Warriors with the new articulation. And of course, Ultimate Warrior is the chase in there. Day one pre-order for me. You know me. No warrior left behind. I got to pick up both those warriors. But I can't believe I forgot to talk about that one. Uh, another one that we had some questions about, and I did reach out to Steve Ozier. Good buddy, Steve Ozier. It was great to spend some time with Steve over there in uh, San Diego talking to him. Very, very nice guy is Steve Ozier. But I did ask him. I said, hey, Bam Bam, Terry Bam Bam, Gordy Freebird fame, of course. That's a two-in-one figure. Well, they showed the extra head for the executioner, but is he going to come with the soft goods that you can take off to make him the executioner? And Steve did confirm. Firm, yes, it will be a true two and one. We will have the soft goods figure. So if you just want Executioner, you want both, you just want Terry Gordy, choose your own Terry Gordy adventure at the end of the day. So that is going to be there. Another thing I did forget to mention, the Monday Night Wars, Kevin Nash. I always think of it as like truck driver Kevin Nash. But he, of course, he had just like his street clothes on and a baseball hat kind of turned. Uh, very cool idea here is it is a two-in-one head on this one. As very similar to G.I. Joe Classified, Lady J or Zorana, for example, the hair piece with the hat is going to be removable. You can put a different hair piece on that. So a little new technology there. I'm definitely here for that. That is a very cool-looking Kevin Nash. Very plain Jane in a lot of ways, but very uh, intricate in a lot of ways. It's kind of how I sum that one up there. So that's some uh, follow-ups on that one. Now we got to turn our attention to something I didn't think we'd be talking about this week. It is a true conspiracy. You ever wonder if they're watching your every move? Cell phones, internet, surveillance. Think about it. Post your... All right, and we're talking Power Town. A Power Town conspiracy? Is there such a thing? Well, it rears its ugly head once again, as this week some interesting things happened this week. Maybe you're aware of it, maybe you're not. Uh, but there was the this website called the Wrestling Collection website. I have never heard of this in my life. Uh, but doing some digging, it seemingly is based in uh, Orange, Alabama, Orange Beach, Alabama. I'm not super familiar. I'll call uh, my damn toys up. He knows Alabama like the back of his hand. Uh, but sounds like it's Orange Beach, Alabama is where this company is based. Well, that is where Power Town shipped from. So there's a lot of conspiracies going around that Power Town is upselling their own product under a different name. Not Power Town. They're using this as a company to maybe take some of the heat away, some of that kind of stuff. Who knows the real truth there, but there's probably a little bit of smoke in there. Maybe this is the website that was distributing it for them. I'm not exactly sure all the legalities and all what was going on there. But a lot of people are angry, and a lot of people do seem to believe this is actually Power Town under another name scalping their own product. Well, you would normally say, Kyle, you're probably upset about that. Honestly, I'm not, and I don't know why anybody would be really upset about it. You vote with your wallet at the end of the day. But here's how I break this one down. Even if it is Power Town doing this, they can do it. It's their, it's their items. It's their things. They can do it. They can choose what to charge for anything they want. That's a, kind of the beauty of business, I guess. And it's up to us to vote with our wallet. Now, say what you want about Power Town, their pre-orders. I wasn't a big fan of the pre-orders opening up multiple times. Not a fan of that at all. But everybody had a chance, unless you're a brand new collector and then it is what it is, everybody had a chance to pre-order at the cheaper price. Now they have this product left over or whatever, the ordered extra, whatever it may be, and they can sell it for whatever they want. They can just come back and say, hey, you had three opportunities to buy these at $50 a pop. Now they're $100 a pop. And obviously a lot of people upset about that $100 price tag. That is a hefty jump. But what do you do? That is the market right now. That is what's going on. Now, I checked the website right before I went the, doing this video. They've dropped the price down. Uh, it was $100. Now it is uh, $79.99. So not sure exactly what's going on there, but something just feels a little bit fishy. But at the end of the day, they can do whatever they want. They can choose the price, and it, it is. The, the window was the window. After that, you're stuck to whatever's left. It's no different than Super 7, things like that. If something sells out, they don't have extra, you're stuck to eBay prices. You're stuck to uh, other retailer prices. And a lot of people mad at ringside collectibles, buying up a bunch of Cody's and probably some Logan Paul's as well. Selling those, guess what, cheaper than eBay. That's not a bad deal at all. But people are mad about them. Oh, how dare they buy these? They are no different than anybody else. They can buy. They're no different than your mom and pop store. They wanted to buy 10 for their local store. And guess what? They're not going to charge what they paid for it. They're going to upsell it. That's what's going to happen. It makes perfect business sense. I do not fault ringside. I don't fault this company for doing that. At the end of the day, I fault people for not picking it up at the time. It was uh, You had your opportunity. And if you miss your opportunity, the opportunities don't last a lifetime. You got to pay up later. That's just the way it is. Or you play the long game. You wait for a deal down the road. 
So just interesting stuff there, but people are really worked up about that. And I don't think you really should be. Obviously, I hate paying. I would hate paying $100 for a Powertown figure when I had the opportunity at 50. That would eat me alive. It would just truly eat me alive. Uh, I'm a little worked up. Figure Collections put up the Headbangers for pre-order for like $10 off. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's my wacky mind. $10 off. $10 in the grand scheme of things isn't the end of the world, of course, but it was $10 cheaper. Uh, San Diego Comic-Con preview uh, or that weekend. Well, I was on a plane, saw that. I'm like, okay, when I get off the plane, I'm going to do that. Well, I get off the plane, I forget. Okay, I saw it. Well, I got this line. I got weighed in or whatever. I I'm going to do it later. Well, later never came. I totally forgot about it. Easily to space it off. And I missed out on the headbangers for $10 cheaper. That's eating me alive right now. I can't believe it. Speaking of eating me alive, I waited in the Mondo line at San Diego Comic-Con. I was going to pick up that Wolverine and Prince Adam exclusive. Well, then what happens to me? I get there like, oh, yeah, we're not selling them here. They're just up on pre-order online. I'm like, oh, I thought for some reason, I guess I was, I don't know. It's hard to keep everything track of everything. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just have to get them online. Well, guess what happened? Kyle got busy, totally spaced it, totally forgot until a couple days in this week. Now they're off their website. I don't know. I'm hoping the Entertainment Earth of the World or something will get that Prince Adam and Wolverine. I hate that I missed out on those. Oh, the collector's a dilemma. That's exactly what it is. But you just got to cool down. You get the blood pressure down a little bit. That's what you have to do. So there's that kind of uh, little talk about the Power Town conspiracy. Rides on once again. Now we're talking a little bit more. Uh, how about a little retro corner of the wrestling news this week? A few follow-ups and a few new things. Uh, Epic Toys, right before San Diego Comic-Con, they did show off the brand new two packs of the Powers, and Pain, Powers of Pain and Demolition, both going up for pre-order very, very soon. Man, I'm here for that. You sign me up all day long with Mass Men and Face Paint. Ooh, baby. So very cool looking figures here. I'll definitely have to pick both of these up. There's no doubt about it there. So look for those pre-orders very soon. Uh, KWK, of course, we've been talking about them a lot. Uh, the ups and downs of that brand. They've you know had some struggle with some of the different talents, of course, and some of the distribution, uh, getting the factories. There's just a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And I talked about it in a couple of the videos. No different than Hasbro, Mattel, all these other ones. There's a lot of things that they would love to tell you a little bit more, but they can't because it's a business. They can't share all the business detailings, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but sometimes Mattel, for example, they get a lot of blame when it's totally out of their control and they would love to stick up for themselves, but they can't. I think there's some of that KWK stuff going on as well. Uh, but that's just kind of the way it goes. But they are going to do pre-orders, and it looks like uh, each month will have like a different pre-order. Uh, I don't know. That's a different way of going. Uh, it sounds like you'll have to do different shipping. So if you're wanting everyone, you're going to have to pay shipping multiple times. That's not super fun. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but I know some people don't want to pre-order everything at once either. So just really kind of weighing your options a little bit. So we'll see what happens with that one. More to come on that. Uh, Zombie Sailor Toys, we did do a discussion video on the Macho Man Randy Savage whole fiasco with Mattel and stuff. Of course, Mattel tell i talked to them asked them about it just kind of mm, not going to talk about it and that makes total sense because it's business at the end of the day you can't share business stuff uh you just got to imagine hey uh in my guess is to sum up that video a little bit either mattel said we're not going to pay you as much money and think of it from mattel's side they've released a lot of macho mans yes we got more macho mans to come but primarily the big heavy hitter Macho Mans have been done for the most part. And I think Mattel, they very easily, and WWE too, could have said, hey, guess what? We're not going to pay you as much money for this next contract because there's not going to be as many Macho Man figures. There's not going to be as big heavy hitter Macho Man figures. We're still going to make them, but the heavy hitters are kind of out of the way. I mean, just generalizing there. So they might have said, hey, we're not going to pay as much. And this company that represents the Macho Man said, nope, we're done. We're done. Or it could be the other way. That company says, hey, I've seen you put out a lot of Macho Mans the last couple of years. We're raising our fee by $5 million, whatever that number is. Who knows what it is? Uh, and then Mattel WWE said, that is not worth it to us. We did the ROI. We cannot make our money back. That's where it goes. Now, who's to say something doesn't change? Because a lot of times, both sides want to do business, but they're way off in financials. They'll probably start working and meeting in the middle. So who knows? Maybe six months from now, Macho Man's back in the game. Who knows? And guess what? They have all those Macho Man figures. You know they're all ready to go, all made. Those can be shipped out at that time. So then you got something really easy, quick to go. You're off to the races with Macho Man. Is there's too much money on the table. And at the end of the day, you know Jesse Ventura. He always says, follow that money. We saw the autograph picture last week, I think, or two, or two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, so follow the money at the end of the day. There'll be more Macho Man. It's just patience, patience. And 
Some people saying Zombie Sailor Toys got the contract. Absolutely not. So many places got Macho Man. And Zombie Sailor did show off his Macho Man, which is an interesting looking one. And it looks like it's going to be a legacy collection. So my gut tells me Zombie's going to release quite a few different Macho Man figures. Uh, and we'll see more of that. We know Major Pod's releasing Macho Man figures. Uh, figure Collections is releasing Macho Man figures. There's Macho Man Mania going from other lines outside of Mattel. We'll see what happens. Heck, who knows? Jazzwares, could they sign the Macho Man? I don't know how and what they could make. I guess they'd have to go around the legalities of things. Could they make an old, uh, you know, old USWA Macho Man figure? Could they make Bone Saw? Could they figure that out? Uh, there's stuff Jazzwares could do. So who knows? Uh, the f future is going to be interesting in the Macho Man collecting department. So we'll stay tuned to that. And the final bit of business here from Zombie Sailor, he did show off Johnny Gargano. Uh, I think that went up for pre-order about eight months ago, nine months ago, what is time as we do say. I have to think that's coming fairly soon, I would hope. He showed off kind of a two-up in the regular pressing, so I guess we'll be on the lookout for that. I hope that ships here fairly soon. Zombie's got a quite delays in between, but he keeps saying things are going to get tightened up, shored up, and it's going to be a lot more uh, uh, streamlined uh, in the future. So we'll see what happens with Zombie Sailor Toys, and we talked a little bit about that in uh, some of the videos this week as well. Another one I talked about forgetting that Ultimate Warrior. How the heck did I forget Mutton Junkyard from G.I. Joe Classified Series in all timer, of course. Now, me personally, I was a Law & Order guy. I love the Law & Order. I love the KP initials on uh, Law's helmet there. I always love that. Oh, my initials? He's wearing my initials on his head. I always thought that was cool. But Mutton Junkyard, the OG uh, animal and animal handler, I guess we'll call it, from the G.I. Joe line. That's going to be a big one. Have to think that'll go up for pre-order fairly soon. So be on the lookout for that one here in the future. But man, I'm here for that all day long. Mutton Junkyard. Keep the Joes coming at the end of the day. One I didn't talk about too much was Jada Toys. Jada Toys? Jada Toys? Yeah, you know what I mean. Street Fighter line, of course. I'm dabbling. Ru, Ryu, Ryu, Ryu? Ah, always confusing me. On the old uh, arcade playground, it was Ryu, but uh, every place is a little different, of course. Uh, but Jada Toys, Street Fighter, we saw Dalsum, Guile, Ken, Cammy, M. Bison. Uh, we saw a few different ones over at San Diego Comic Con. So this line definitely has some legs. Uh, that exclusive at San Diego Comic Con, a very popular one. A lot of people looking for that one. Uh, so definitely uh, busy times in the Street Fighter line. I really didn't want to go down that line, but now I'm looking at going down it. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The nice thing is they're fairly affordable, $24.99 or so. Definitely cheaper than going with Storm Collectibles 100 plus at this point. So I think that's my Street Fighter line going forward. We'll see what happens there. But if you're into those, those figures look really good in person as well. And we did do the Ryu Ru review on the channel about a week ago or so. Check that one out. Uh, one interesting line I wanted to check out. Of course, you know I love G.I. Joe. I love my Valiverse figures, so I want to check this out. It was the Call of Duty figures. Now, Jazzwares had a booth. They had these uh, displayed there. Not for me. I've never played Call of Duty in my life, but I love the Army action figures. These just didn't hit where I wanted to be hit, I guess, in my sweet spot. Maybe it's because I don't know anything about the brand. I don't know anything about the game. So maybe that's the issue there. But the figures just looked a little emotionless in the face. Just not uh, firing where I need to. I'm just going to stick to my G.I. Joes and my Valiverse. And that's going to be it for now, at least. I'm going to do that. And a few other things. Uh, McFarlane Toys, that Spawn Batman 2-pack. I was totally out, and then I saw it in person, totally back in. <laughs> That's the way it goes. I love some Spawn. Batman's all right. I don't mind Batman. He's not my tip-top favorite, but I love Spawn. I love what the pack represents. I think it'd be a cool display piece, so I'll be picking that one up. Another one I picked up was Catman. I don't know anything about this Catman, but this looked like a very cool figure. So I was on the plane waiting to board uh, in Dallas, Texas, I think it was, and I actually ordered that off the McFarlane website, so I picked up that one. And then uh, Medieval Spawn came Kickstarter, we touched on it on the miscellaneous reveals video this week, but a Kickstarter for Medieval Spawn just seems weird to me for McFarlane. He's got all the money in the world. He releases figures all the time. He's got deep connections with Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, his own website. I don't understand why he needs to do a Kickstarter for a figure. I could see if he was going to make a new Spawn Alley playset. He was going to make the Spawn Mobile. I could see that as a Kickstarter, but just a one-off figure. The last one I understood, it was kind of the return of Spawn. That made sense to me. But now Spawn's chugging along pretty good, and I get it. This figure is going to be just extra next level. It's going to look really cool, give you a lot of deep designs into it. But I truly feel like he could have just sold this on his website, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, $100, call it good. I don't think he'd have any trouble getting that through to suppliers, but... 
I don't know. More to come on that one. I guess we'll stay tuned. But I passed on the last one. I guess it's up in the air on this one here. We'll see what ends up happening with Medieval Spawn. But he was definitely an old favorite of me when I was a kid. I always loved the Medieval Spawn character. So... An interesting week in the toy news department this week. A lot of stuff. Really, you had toy news videos every single day. So this is kind of a catch-up video in a lot of ways. And tomorrow's weekly purchases, you're going to see everything that I was picked up. I'm going to talk a little bit about the experience and what went down. Uh, so stay tuned to that weekly purchases video. And don't forget about the Patreon stuff as well. So a lot of stuff going on right now here on this channel. And PowerCon looming. A lot more stuff coming in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for it all. Always a busy time. No rest for the wicked. No sleep either. I went 40 hours straight without sleep uh, coming back from San Diego Comic Con. That was an all-time record for me. So definitely crazy. But now we get into the album of the week. The album of the week this week. The 40th anniversary this week of Metallica Kill 'em All. Oh, Kill 'em All, my favorite Metallica album of all time. I was a very small kid when Metallica came out with Injustice for All. First thing I ever saw with Metallica was on MTV, the one video, an all timer video for sure. And then I went back. I checked out Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning, and of course, Kill 'em All. And Kill 'em All stole my heart and never let go at an early age. I don't know what it is about that one. I don't know if it's that new wave of British heavy metal with a whole new sound added to it. But there's just something so raw and cool about that one. Uh, and then I remember in, in Nitro back in the day, Sting came out to Seek and Destroy. I was like, man, they're playing all the hits. Sting playing all the, get the face paint on, coming out to Metallica. What more could little Kyle want, or teenage Kyle at the time? Uh, but Kill 'em All just changed my life forever. And like I said, it's still my favorite Metallica album. And a lot of people, it's not, of course. They don't like the raw sound. They like, you know, the Black Album, other things like that. But man, just an all-timer of an album. Uh, one of the most underrated albums of all time, actually, there. At least for me. I, I absolutely love Kill 'em All. And I just can't believe it's 40-year anniversary for that one. Truly, in a lot of ways, changed the music business, the heavy metal business, the heavy metal world uh, in one way or the other, I guess, at Kill 'em All. So if you've never listened to Kill 'em All or if you listened to it in a while, man, give it a spin for the 40th anniversary. Still holds up to me. Absolutely love it. No, no beating that one for me for Metallica. So there it is right there. And also, special shout out. They announced last week, uh, I think September 16th coming out. Uh, of course, you guys know I like Lemmy. You know that. Motorhead, of course, my all-time favorite. But Lemmy had another band. A lot of people didn't know about it. It's a band called The Head Cat. And he's got multiple albums out with The Head Cat. More of a rockabilly sound. He's got a member of the Stray Cats in there. Uh, so a Slim Jim, of course, Phantom. Um, they have a live album from Live in Berlin from many years ago coming out in September. So check that one out. I pre-ordered that. I'm all in on the Lemmy stuff. I love the Head Cat. I love rockabilly. Carl Perkins, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, very underrated after all these years. But gives me coming to that hard. It's almost like heavy metal Carl Perkins is what the Head Cat reminds me of. So love that, of course. Love my boy Lemmy. Love it all. So there it is. There's the albums of the week this week of the San Diego Comic-Con week. So there it is. That's everything. That's it all. That's everything. I've said enough. There's enough done. <laughs> but don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every single day. More content. A whole lot more content, especially the weeks to come over on Patreon. So stay tuned over there. Of course, best way to support the channel and all the nonsense it does bring. Uh, don't forget ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. You can also support the channel over there. And don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for Toy News of the Week, I am Kyle. See you guys all real soon.